All right guys, what's up, how y'all doing today? So I wanna make a video really quick about common mistakes people make when they move abroad for the first time. So this could be applied to any country you're moving to. I talk a lot about Colombia because I moved to Colombia, I lived there for six years, currently in Brazil, but again, can apply for any country. Mistake number one, and this is a big one, there's a lot of people that make this mistake because they're, they're too quick to jump the gun. People making the decision to move abroad even before visiting the country. They go visit already planning to move abroad. That's a huge mistake. What I advise is visit the country multiple times and for extended periods of time. I understand that a lot of people that you guys work, you guys have a job, whatever it may be, and for you to take off from your work is kind of difficult, but you can take an unpaid vacation and just go and, and stay there for a period of time. That way you get to see the country, you get to see the culture, and if it's really for you. And not even that, not even just that country, Go check out multiple countries because it's a big decision. You're making a big decision to uproot and to move to another country. A lot of people don't make it. A lot of people don't make it when they move abroad and they end up moving back home, which is no big deal. You, you gave it a shot, but it's always best to do it the most intelligent way. And the next mistake that people make is kind of related to this, the first mistake, and that's getting rid or selling everything before going. What do I mean by that? Like the first tip, people tend to dream or jump the gun and just start getting rid of everything, selling everything, selling their homes, their cars, everything before they go and do the first tip that I gave you guys. The worst case scenario is you sell everything, you sell your home, and then you get over there to a new country and after three, four, five, six months, maybe a year, you say, you know what? I'm not sure if I like it and then you go back, but you go back to nothing, all right? So right now, I think the, heart, the housing market in the States, or maybe in your home country where you're coming from, is kind of crazy right now. Houses are flying off the shelf, right? And that's great. You can actually get a lot of money for selling your house at this, at this moment. But the other side of the coin is, it's hard to buy houses. It's hard to purchase a house again. At right now in this real estate market, if you wanna buy a house, you're gonna be in line with competing offers and paying more than what you would wanna pay for the, your exact same house. So what I advise is, for example, the home, don't sell it right away, rent it out. The rental market I think is good right now as well. So make the move after you've done the first tip of going multiple times to that country, going to other countries surrounding it or other parts of the world, and doing the same thing and then making your final decision to move to that new country, rent out your home, get some income from it. And after a year or two, whatever it may be, then sell the house because you know you're gonna be staying. Now, if, for example, I always like to think the worst case scenario, when they come up with a solution. So worst case scenario when it comes to the house is, or I go to the new country, I don't like it, I come back and I don't have a house somewhere because I already sold it. Well, the solution would be, well, I got a lot of money from my home sale because the market's kind of crazy right now. It's great to sell a house. I got all that money. And when I, if I was to go back to the States, I don't really care about being a homeowner. I can rent. And that extra money that I got, I'm able to invest in it different ways. If I'm able to figure that out in that, in that solution, then okay, selling the house is not that big deal. But if you're not able to figure out that solution of the worst case scenario, and you're coming back, you want to be a homeowner, and you have to repurchase the house, but for way more than what you bought it for before because the market's crazy, then I would hold off and probably rent out the house. And about the other stuff, selling off all your stuff, maybe put it into storage, which I don't believe in storage, I don't like storages, but it may work. Put it into storage during the beginning while you're trying to figure out if you're gonna make your new home or not, and then if you do make your new home, then come back and get rid of everything and sell it. The next mistake is paying for a shipping container to move all their furniture and stuff abroad. And again, it goes to the first one, the, the people who don't do the research, they just pack up all their stuff and pay for a shipping container and then move everything over to the new country. Furniture, clothes, uh, accessories, everything over to the new country. And that's pretty expensive. I don't have the exact price, but I'm pretty sure it's expensive. I've never gotten quotes, but let us know in the comments who has gotten quotes and how much they come out to be more or less. But what I've heard is not cheap. And the thing is, for example, in Colombia, where I lived for many years, furniture in Colombia or in other countries versus the state is different. They tend to be smaller. Most parts of the states, everything's just supersized, all right? Everything's supersized. So you have to have, you have a supersized house and a supersized apartment, so you need supersized uh, furniture. You take that same furniture to your new country, like in Europe or in South America, Latin America, it's not gonna fit. Your super, your super size furniture is not gonna fit in the, in the normal size apartments and houses over there. Initially, you should rent furnished apartments. Go on Airbnb, 
rent the apartments and it's all furnished. You don't have to worry about it. You have to do is come with your suitcases. And if you end up deciding, if you get a long-term visa, you can stay there long-term, you want to stay there long-term, then look at the apartments, go price furniture in your adopted country. It's probably even cheaper than your home country. And they're going to be probably smaller, you know, smaller sizes <laughs> than your, than back in the States. And the price to purchase everything new will probably come out to be the same as the price of shipping it internationally in a shipping container. And again, guys, I understand some people have very personal items that they hold on to. I have a personal item that I hold on to. I still hold on to it. Thank God it doesn't take a shipping container for me to hold on to. It's, a, it's actually a photo album of my childhood and my family. I keep it still. I made that photo album when I was young and I was always adding to it and I still keep it. I think that's really the only thing I have that's special for me. Everything else I don't mind getting rid of. For me, me, that's David, that's David. So if maybe you guys have a piece of furniture or something that, that's a family heirloom you want to take with you, okay, go, that's fine. You know, But if it's not special and dear to heart, consider replacing it and not paying that huge amount of money for a shipping container. But remember the first tips. You shouldn't even be thinking about that until you've already investigated the country, stayed a long period of time. When I say long period, at least six months, you know, three, six months. And the last mistake people make is getting scammed online for services or even rentals. Every day, every other day, there's always someone posting, hey, I need to rent an apartment in Medellin and this is my budget. You know, they say a budget of whatever it is, a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks. They'll post online saying they need rent and then all these people are saying it. Then they'll say, the people saying that they have rentals saying, okay, well you need to send a deposit to hold the rental because we have other people wanting to rent the apartment. And then they'll say, you can send the deposit through Western Union. They send the deposit, which is whatever, a thousand bucks, two thousand dollars, whatever it is. And then they never hear from that person again. I actually heard a story where someone that got scammed that way, basically he posted, he got a lot of comments, someone DM'd him, reached out and said, we have the department sent photos sent everything even had like a website to where that they were a real estate agency with a legitimate looking website and the person the agent said okay well the whole department needs to send this deposit he sent the deposit the people actually sent them the address and everything to look legitimate and he arrived in medellin colombia with the suitcases he showed up the apartment and he showed the doorman okay I have this rental, this is my name, can you let me in? And the doorman looked at him and said, no, that apartment's not for rent, you're not on the list, I can't let you in. And then he tried to reach out to those people, the phone number was changed, everything was changed, he couldn't get in contact with them. He actually made a post on the Facebook group showing the, um, the communication through WhatsApp and then the pictures and the website, all that good stuff. But the guy, he got scammed, unfortunately. So that's one huge mistake when you're moving abroad, not knowing who you're talking to, talking to the wrong people. There's so many scammers, not just Colombia, it's all over the world. I don't care if it's, it's, it could be in Europe, it could be in States, everywhere in the world. Just don't trust right away people that talk to you online, especially if they're saying send money over to do this, this and that. That's a huge red flag. The best way for new people going to Colombia or to any country that you don't know the rules, the laws, you don't have connections, you don't know who to trust, just use Airbnb. Airbnb is good. Yeah, it's more expensive. Yes, but it's more expensive because it's furnished. It has utilities, it has internet, everything's set up for you. All you gotta do is show up with a suitcase. Airbnb has protection, protects you, protects the, the, the landlords or the, the people that own the apartment. That's the best way to do it.